Hello everyone. So today we are going to learn about analysis of algorithm. So analysis of algorithm is a very important topic before you dive deep into data structures and algorithms. All right. So let me first tell you like why it is so important, why it is needed. So there are like many problems which have a number of solutions. And as a software engineer, your task is to find the algorithm which will solve the problem in the least time. It will be more efficient. All right. So to find out, to compare between algorithms, we use analysis of algorithms. All right. So in computer science, we use asymptotic analysis. So what asymptotic analysis does, it measures order of growth of time taken by a functional program in terms of input size. Okay, for example, suppose input size is n. So it will tell ki how the program grows, whether it grows quadratically, linearly, constant, etc. All right. Okay, let me give you an example. So here we have a question, find sum of first n natural numbers. Suppose we have given this question to two software engineers, all right. So one software engineer came with this solution and one software engineer came with this solution. So let's see here what he did. He declared a variable sum and then he put the value of sum as n into n plus 1 by 2. This is a standard formula for finding sum of first and natural numbers and I hope you must be knowing about it. And this is another program uh, written by another developer and here what he did he declared sum all right and then he used a loop which ran from i is equal to 1 till n and he added the uh, value of iterators 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on okay and then he also returned the sum so now let's talk about time this uh, program takes so what this program does is it adds a num two numbers, multiplies two numbers and divide two numbers. So operations such as divide, subtract, add, multiply, they takes constant time. All right. Nothing else, just constant time. So here, the, what will be the time taken then? Constant. So I'm saying C1. C1 is a constant. All right. Any constant. And let's come to here, program 2. Now looking at this loop, sum is equal to sum plus i. This statement takes constant time. Suppose it's taking constant time of C2, all right. And it is run for n number of times. So it is like C2 plus C2 plus C2. C2, all right, and this is you know n times, right? So it would be what n C2, all right. So time taken here would be what n C2. And then there will be some other things in this program which would be taking constant time such as declaration of variables for example declaration of variable variable of sum declaration of variable i so we can say they are taking c3 all right so this is what we do here now to in asymptotic analysis you will come across asymptotic notations which includes big O of n, theta of n and I am sure you must have heard these somewhere. So we will study them under this asymptotic analysis. Okay, But before studying them, let's talk about order of growth. We will talk about order of growth in more detail. Alright, let's talk about order of growth in more detail. So. As a software engineer, what is your main task? You've been given a problem 
and there would be multiple solutions of the same problem. Now what you have to do is to find the most efficient solution which takes the least time. So what you will do is you will find time taken by all the algorithms. Alright. And then you will write a polynomial in terms of you know time and then we see order of growth of every time taken you know and one having least order of growth that algorithm becomes efficient okay and now you might be wondering what is least order of order of growth what might be the higher order of growth so basically you might be wondering how to compare you know order of growth between two uh, two polynomials all right so let me tell you how we can do it suppose there is a function of time fn all right and there is a function gn so a function fn is said to be growing faster than gn if gn upon fn is equal to zero when n tends to infinity all right so it means ki gn has a fast order higher order of growth and gn having lower order of growth all right let's take an example you will understand better so here see fn is equal to n square plus n plus 6 and uh, you know gn is equal to 2n plus 5 all right so what we will do is we will put gn here gn we have put here 2n plus 5 right and fn is here and we have to put limit n tends to infinity and I am hoping you guys know how to put limits. There are basic maths. So what we'll do, we'll divide n, we'll divide numerator and denominator both by n square. All right. So this becomes two by n. This becomes five plus n five by n square. One plus one by n plus six by n square. Now as we put n is equal to infinity, these terms become zero. So this becomes zero. This becomes zero. This becomes zero. And this becomes zero. So our final result becomes zero. Hence you can say this gn function has lower order of growth and this fn, fu fn function has higher order of growth. But when comparing many order of growth, you will not do every time you will not do limits. Uh, so there has to be a simpler direct way to find order of growth. Alright. So yeah, there is one. So we will talk about it. All right, so we'll talk about now direct ways to find and compare growths. All right, so it involves two steps. First, we have to ignore lower order terms, and then we have to ignore the leading terms constant. Okay, so yeah, leading terms constant. All right, let's talk with an example. See, fn here is two n square plus n plus x. Right. Now what we say, what we have written here, ignore lower order terms. So what are the lower order terms? n plus x. So we'll, you know, ignore this, ignore this. Now this is the leading term. And what we have written, ignore leading terms constant. So 2 has to be ignored. Now what we are left with, n square. Hence order of growth of this function becomes n square. Now let's talk about another function, gn. All right. Here also what we have written, ignore lower order terms. So we'll ignore this term, sorry, we'll ignore this term 3 and then we'll ignore leading terms constant which is 100. So what uh, remains n, so order of growth of gn becomes n. Now we have got order of growth of two functions, alright. Now how do we compare them? So we have a small hierarchy which is very easy and you can learn it very easily so it involves like this so the least order growth is with constant all right constant grows with the least order all right basically constant doesn't grow obviously right but still we have put it in the hierarchy table because you know we have to compare it to other terms. Then after that log of log of n 
it grows you know very minutely and then there is log n which grows faster than th uh, log n and this continues this is n 1 by 3 and e cube root of n this is square root of n n 1 by 2 this is n this is n square n cube n this is power 4 2n and this goes on right then n n power 5 n power 6 and so on so let's come back to our example all right we have fn we have order of growth n square and gn we have order of growth n all right now what c where is n square here right n square is here and where is gn order of growth of gn is n so n is here so as you can see n is smaller than n square in this hierarchy table so we can say that gn's order of growth is less than fn's order of growth so suppose there is a function there is an question which have algor two algorithms one whose time polynomial is uh, fn and another pol another time pol another algorithm whose time pol uh, polynomial is gn all right so order of growth of fn is n square and order of, order of growth of gn is n so we'll say that the second algorithm of gn would be more efficient because its order of growth is less than that of fn so this is how we compare different algorithms all right so i'll end the lecture here and in the next video we learn about asymptotic notations which will include big O of n, theta of n and then we will cover like what can be the best and worst time complexities. Alright. So see you next time.